Good morning, you find me at Ride, and uh, for today I have Henry. Say hello, Henry. Henry is a friend of mine from the Isle of Wight who's had to move to London and uh, give up beekeeping temporarily, but he's uh, working on, uh, he's found himself a site and so it looks like he'll be able to restart. I'm quite envious of London beekeeping because it's very good forage up there. Good. Got the GoPro out because this nook, last week I saw just a few eggs, so we were looking to see that the queen was mated and laying, um, and so my notes said some eggs seen last week. This week we come to this. Now, at first glance you think, oh great, there we go, sealed brood, but what this brood is universally, if you notice, it's quite big and bobbly, and that is nothing but drone brood. Now, Drone brood, in you know, straight out of the gate like that, is quite bad news. Um, that means that the queen hasn't mated. So drone eggs are unfertilized eggs. If the eggs are unfertilized, um, then they become male bees. Uh, if they're fertilized, they can be workers or queens, um, female bees. And if she's doing nothing but drone brood straight out of the gate like this, that's quite a bad sign. That means that potentially her mating failed. It might be that she, her time to do her mating flight was in that four days of bad weather we had a, a week or so back. Um, and so she may have failed. So options. One of the simplest ones would be to give them a frame of eggs from one of the other ones and give them a chance to make a new queen. Um, that's doable, it sets them back a little bit. That's another 18 days before she's hatched, potentially a week before she's mated. We're looking at a month without brood there. So it may be that the better option, oh, the wind is blowing the smoke all over the place. It may be that the better option is to simply take this queen out and combine these with another colony, just to make these bees useful uh, and let them live out their life usefully because they've already had the length of time it takes for a queen to come through um, so they're all quite old bees now and I don't know that they would live long enough for and the time it takes to bring another queen through on these ones if my queen rearing was working at uh, Newport the way I was hoping it was I would be able to just take the take this the duff queen out of here and um, give them a new one that's mated and that's one of the reasons that I'm so eager to do that is to have that facility to be able to solve problems like this. I think in this case I'm going to have to just find another small colony, um, take out the queen so that she doesn't fight with the, the viable queen and, um, and just combine these in with some newspaper. I haven't got the equipment to do that today so I may have to come back later this week and do it. But yeah this is, uh, this is one of the things that can happen when you're trying to supersede queens. Um, it doesn't always work. Anyway, uh, on with the show. All right, we have moved on to this one that I talked about in a previous video where the colony in the top brood box had lost their queen uh, and with no real prospect of, uh, of replacing her. Uh, and so I newspapered them in into the colony, colony on the bottom with the brood box. Uh, <laughs> I newspapered them in with the colony on the bottom uh, who did have a viable queen. So this week, as I, as I mentioned, we'll still have all the newspaper around the edges, looking a little bit worse for wear as it's seen a bit of rain. But as we take this off, so if I hand you to Henry, if you just sort of wink that, it's quite a fisheye lens, so it doesn't matter too much. So as we take this off, I will anticipate, so we're just going to have to crack a little bit of prop this here. Twist. There we go. <laughs> what we see is very neatly chewed all around it uh, and united so you see there's no strife between them so uh, all, I, all I'll be doing now is just kind of looking at what frames can be taken out of this one because they've not got much on replaced with the few in this one which do have action on uh, making sure that all the brood nest is together but that turns this into quite a nice sized colony that uh, once we've got the nectar flow back on, because we're, we're just coming out of the, the June gap just now, be able to put a couple of supers on and expect some nice honey out of for the end of the season. So we just take all of this away. This can just go to lighting smokers now. Because it's dry. But they've done quite a nice job there. And as we inspect through here, I will in expect 
to find nice brood in here and we've got a nice big big colony of colony of bees made out of two medium sized colonies. Oh, we've got a little bit of stores going on here, that's good. So, been a little bit concerned already this morning because um, we've had a bit of a June gap, so that's the gap between the spring flowers finishing and the uh, main summer flowers starting. So this brambles looks like it's out for quite a while, but a lot of flowers open uh, a few days to a week before, um, before the, um, they start giving nectar. And so a lot of these hives have been absolutely dry of honey, um, but we're seeing just a little bit of new honey going in here, which is pleasing. That means there's a surplus that the bees aren't eating, and we should start seeing this come up. I've got a few little grubs on here as well, just in there. So I just want to see some new laid eggs to be satisfied that they're queen right. But yeah, I'll keep oh, careful now, bees. I'll keep this frame. Feel free to have a look at that next one. You're right in their flight path. Yeah. Ah, uh, don't worry about that. Yeah, I'm not concerned about that. At some point, yeah, when the opportunity see. comes to take that one away, I will. But Little bit stores. A so, bit of new, honey. new laid eggs at all? Uh, yes. Yep. Good. Okay. Right then, so the only other thing we're looking for then is any sign of queen cells or anything like that. Cool. Uh, once we get the nectar flow back on, this will be a really good colony for, for honey. Space outside of all the seal at the minute, they're about to have a major emergence, which is cool. They're very polite, these aren't they? These ones are, are, are being very calm, which is nice. But then, you know, Can't I think they've got a little bit of stores, <laughs> so they're a bit happier than. Brace cone, too stressed about that. It's, yeah, it's annoying because it means you have to just be a little bit more careful not to squash bees when putting it all back together again, but I don't, you know, being a little bit more careful is kind of a major part of our whole business and ethos, so. Oh, plenty of drawing as well, lots of nice dangling bees. Yeah, all right. 
this is all fresh. This is all brand spanking fresh brewed and at like every stage. Lovely. This is it. I think putting those extra bees in will have made this one do a really nice span. It's a nice dumpy drone as well. Lovely. So all I'm looking for on this one, because this is just drawn. So I don't want to chuck any brood in there. Yes, do. But I do want to make space because I think there might be some useful stuff in those frames from the top. So I may well shake these bees off and call that the end of what's going in there. And then what have we got? Uh, I think that leaves us four frames from up here to put in. And hopefully there's useful stuff from up here. So we'll take this one out as well and shake the bees right off. I wonder whether what also keeps these ones calm is uh, this lemon balm that I'm always <laughs> treading on. I think they just go, ah. They do like the lemon lemony smell, don't they? Well, it smells like um, the, the swarm pheromone. Yeah. And so I wonder whether they just go, ah, home. You know, well, that does make them just straight up happier. I ought to just plant some in. <laughs> <clears throat> right, this one's got. So if there's anything like stores or brood on, then I want it down in this one because I want to reduce this down to one. Do you want me to, you want me to just shake them off in there? Uh, sh so shake them off into this one, yes. yeah, because I'm going to leave that one out just as bait. And so I will just want every bee out of there. Occasionally you just have to give them a little flick. A little bit of encouragement, it seems rude, but... Thank you. <coughs> So look, this is a nice oh, bit of stores. stores. Well, first, this... The first actual stores. Yeah, well they'll want that. This yeah. is now going to be quite a lot of mouth. Well they've probably put all of their stores from down there up here. There's, that's actually a very good insight, you're probably right. Um, yes, it looks like they have. This is all stores. So this one did have a lot of nothing but stores because they were queenless for so long as well. So yeah. the bees had nothing else to do. do you to yeah, I will just take that queen cell off. Queen cup. Oh, is there a... Just a little one, it's just a play cup. cup but... I don't want to give them ideas because there'll be now quite a nice big colony in here. And um, this one's a bit lighter. I can see a bit of glistening going on. Ah, this is um, this is a, 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 a super that's more. Oh, what I will do is I will put that at the end so that at some point, if they do pick it clean, I'm able to take that out. Uh, so. Yeah, let's just see. Is there, no, and that's all stores as well. Yeah, stores, stores, right. and more stores. And there's a little so there's only room for two more. Up on the side. Oh, it looks like they built, they built two more in the middle as well. But oh, that's where the um, their their queen that they brought on that then flew off came from. So. Okay. Right now, if I, think, I think I think these two are looking better than this one. Do you want me yeah. to? Well, what I'll do actually. Is if one there's there. yeah absolutely so yeah that one so there's room for bees here so I'm not so I'll just get everything really, really soft and I'll shut that gives you a little bit of wriggle room there just be careful of rolling the bees and then yeah I'll shake bees off here and put them over in that one where uh, where they could do with just a little bit of just a little bit of insurance. So these ones have got a good good amount of stores left over. Those ones, I just don't like them being dry, even if I am confident in the nectar flow. Yeah, you've got you've got <coughs> a decent half frame there. Yeah, well that gives them something, doesn't it? Yeah, this last one's there. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so if you just want to sort of go through and just get, oh yeah, we'll just need all of those out so we can shake all the bees out of that because I want that empty as a bait. Like any bees left in there are going to cling around being sad, not realizing they can fly three feet back to their sisters. Okay, so I've, I've had you on recording all that, but I will just say it to camera as well. Um, Okay, so we have rationalised 
down we've taken out any empty frames out the bottom and put in frames with anything good any stores or brood in from the top into here to just consolidate it down into one into one hive we're just going to shake out all the bees out of that and leave everything bare in this next one next to it as a bait hive however there's room for 11 frames in here and we've got a 12th one here and as i said earlier some of our other hives are a bit dry this one so i'm i'm pretty confident that we've got a good nectar flow i'm seeing bees honey bees on all of this now on this bramble but just if i've got the option here I prefer not to leave a hive dry at any point and there is absolutely no stored honey in here and so I've shaken the bees off this one and I'm going to donate it to the, these bees. Oh, I'll just flick them off because I don't want to put strange bees in there. Um, so I will donate this one to these ones so that they've just got a little something so if we do get some unseasonably poor weather or anything like that these ones have got something that they can draw on. So I'm just gonna take this totally undrawn frame out. What I will do, length is any good there. So I'm taking a completely undrawn frame out here. And see these ones are a bit more cranky as well, which I think might be to do with them not having much stores. And I will just put this one at the end here so that they've got a little something just to see them right for whatever reason we've got a good weather forecast all this week the roots are wet on all the nectar providing plants the nectar providing plants are coming on now and the nectar flow will increase but if anything unexpected happens those ones have got a little bit of something in reserve to look after them which is important so let's close that up it's good having help. All the while I was waffling onto you, Henry's just been smashing it out over there. <laughs> All right. Huh? Quite literally. Yes. Yes, it, there's no science behind sort of getting bees out of a hive. So people, I'll, I'll just pause for a moment and have a look here. I, I had some questions earlier about polystyrene or um, uh, styrofoam as uh, I think American beekeepers might call it. And... Uh, it, I understand sort of reservations. You've got one bee on here that wouldn't mind being shaken out into there. She's just on the bottom. She keeps hiding from you. She's flipping over to the other oh side. Yes, yeah, she was doing <laughs> peeking over one side and then the other every time you swapped. Is uh, a surprisingly clever game for a small. Um, so yeah, so if you just pause for a moment, Henry, while I can talk about this. So I can understand the reservation about such an unnatural substance um, being used for for beekeeping. But as you can see, they naturalize it very quickly. You see this propolizing up of the inside edges here. That's what they'd do in the wild. If they were in a, in a tree trunk or something like that, this, they would, they would put propolis, this bee resin, all over the insides of this. And so now when I sterilize these, I'll steam these so that the propolis um, liquefies, and, and you know, that's hot enough to, to kill off any bacteria um, or spores as well. Um, but I, I do try not to scrape much of the propolis about. I just let that spread the liquid prop around a bit more. And then the bees put more on as they see fit. Um, and it just makes for a, for a more natural internal environment. So it looks a bit messy because um, it's this sort of orangey brown. Um, but that is an entirely clean substance that the bees like. And that's, that's how they would be. It just shows up more against these than it does in a, in a wooden uh, hive, which is already brown to start with. Um, but, you know, this is... The bees are quite happy in the uh, polystyrene, as we call it here, styrofoam, as the Americans might call it. Um, and, you know, it's got a good thermal property, um, you know, compared, similar, I think, to the thickness of what a tree trunk would be for a wild colony. Um, Bee Farmers magazine this month has got a fantastic article about Darwinian beekeeping and trying to uh, manage your hives as close as you can to how, um, how wild bees are. And you might think that the styrofoam is... Uh, is not compatible with that kind of ethos but i actually think it is I, I really think it is so the only other question about that is of course it's you know not recyclable and i've, I've once had uh, 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 an eco warrior type go well that's going to end up being a million years in a landfill and uh, well the thing is it's durable if it's ended up in a landfill i'm doing something terribly wrong i int i intend to use these hives for my whole career um and uh, and so you know they shouldn't 
they should be usable with a little bit of repair and um, a little bit of filling in any any gouges or anything like that and a bit of bit of paint every now and again for for the whole of my career and whoever I end up passing these on to at the end of that so that's that's my thoughts on that matter um, I'm always happy to be discussed on it uh, with respect always uh, okay and finally a ride and uh, with with a prayer on my heart really because where we've had this lack of nectar flow um, I anticipate some of these being quite light but I have the county show in two weeks and I need some honey to sell uh, we are somewhat short on ready cash at the minute my wealth is entirely tied up in bees um, and uh, so we are going to look at harvesting some honey today which I suspect will be a little bit of a glean it will be it'll be a bit of a scraping of the barrel so if I had three full supers I reckon that would be enough I, I'd had about that much for last year's county show which is exactly the wrong time for most beekeepers uh, and I almost sold out we got to the end of the day and I had four jars left over uh, and some nice ready cash in my pocket which is good because that then gave us enough to buy all the things that we needed before the main harvest in uh, uh, in mid-august um, but in the normal course of things when I take a frame out of one of these uh, I would want it to be entirely capped I would want all four sides spread out to capped uh, honey in there uh, and that way you are absolutely 100% confident that it is all down at this 19% uh, water content that will not ferment it's then too too concentrated for, for yeast to work in it for that to then ferment now I am not going to be playing so fast and loose with that that I'm going to risk putting baker's honey, honey over 19% over water, into jars and selling it. Um, so I have a refractometer which will be the final test of, of every batch that I spin out before it goes into jars and that will allow me to precisely measure the percentage. Um, but it may just be that I end up taking some of this and then having to reject it and feed it back to the bees. Um, rather than putting it in jars so uh, the having it all capped to all four sides is just a way of not wasting a journey not wasting your time taking one that isn't ready yet taking it home doing work and then having to bring it back and give it back to the bees to finish um, but the situation I'm in at the moment means I'm gonna to have to risk that but there is a, a, a good test that's a decent rule of thumb when you take these which is called the shake test which is honey that won't shake out if you if you hold the the frame vertical and shake it that honey is pretty good that should be around your 90 your your 19 percent mark uh, and so that averaged out with any capped as well usually is fairly foolproof I've never yet caught myself out that way um, so my only risk and we haven't looked in yet my only other concern is because we've had a, a, a gap in the nectar flow honey that was in here these were looking all right um, a couple of weeks ago uh, they may have been eating it. These may be dry because this is a big colony of bees in here with a lot of mouths to feed and it may be that they've been going up here and eating it. Now that isn't terrible news because it's been keeping my bees alive but it does it is a little bit inconvenient for the county show. Now I've not just got ride here I've got St Helens where I am confident there's going to be a good amount of honey I've got Roxall where I'm confident there's a good amount of honey but we like to sell single location honey I do not blend the honey from all our different locations together and uh, so the jar will have Ride or Roxall or St Helens or Carisbrook on it and that will be the apiary that the honey comes from and our customers really really like that um, and so I'd love to just be able to present the customers at the county show with the choice of more than one site last year we only had St Helens uh, and you know people people accepted that but it did disappoint a few people who wanted honey from from our other locations as well so I would like to have a little bit of honey from these to be able to just put some ride jars out for that event so let's have a look alrighty uh, might need to just refresh the you missed it because I set, switched it off to save battery while I was doing the Sorry. smoker and then Henry cracked on because Henry hasn't done any beekeeping for at least two years I'm and has been very gagging. excited I'm Gagging, gagging for some beekeeping because he loves beekeeping and uh, so he cracked on and he said I think Chris you're going to be happy and yes so we can see straight away look we've got capped honey up here so 
not much on here, not much on, uh, there's capped on one side of here, but then we've got cap, 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 cap. That's gonna be, that could be maybe, maybe 30 pounds. So no, normally a full super is about 30 pounds of honey. So, you know, this could be maybe 20 pounds of honey. That's, that's a good start for us. And then there may be some in the second one down. So I'll let you carry on while I do the lighting of the smoker. Normally the assistant beekeeper's job, I don't care about all that because <laughs> I'm not paying you and I just don't care. I just like the jobs to be done. I don't care who does them. <laughs> it's a good thing I've got a lot more cardboard. Oh, all right. Are these ones like their properly uh, If they have, if they're bees that are mad for propolis, they usually have a lineage to, to some of Mum's queens. I don't know what happened with some of Mum's first queens, but she had, she had, she has some that have this trait that they are absolutely crackers for it. Although, to be honest, no, this isn't this isn't like Mum's level of propolis. This is like normal. No, I, I remember your, your mum's also, side. Also, part of why these will be very stuck will be because I don't often go through the super, so it's just been stuck down for a very long time. So that's got some on. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so. Right, that side you're all right, but I think. All right, yeah, here we go. So, this honey here, I've still got you switched on. Yes, I do. This area here with the white on, that is wax capped over and that's all right. But if I just, I'm just gonna move you around slowly so that the glisten shows. So we have nectar in here that is glistening and it's not yet capped. So the bees haven't, don't feel it's finished, but it could be enough for our purposes, if I may, Henry. So I tell you what, if you take the camera, just try not to sort of hold it over the microphone because every now and again I get stuff that I have to leave on the capping room floor. So this shake test, which is a good rule of thumb, is I hold it, horizontally like this. I have to think every now and again about horizontally and vertically. Horizontally like this. So you see this area here at the moment does not have any little spots on. If I do this, there's still no little spots of, of loose nectar there. And so that's quite viscous. And so I'm actually confident to take this and put this in a jar for the county show. Um, so in the normal course of things, it's just, I wouldn't take this because there's so much more room for it. So the workload of uncapping this and putting it in the centrifuge and spinning it out is just, is quite a lot of work for not as much honey as it could be. So I'd normally leave this, but where I need it for an event, I'm gonna take it today. So what we do is we flick the bees off. So you see, I don't use smoke where the honey is because I don't wanna make the honey taste a little bit smoky. So we just flick the bees off and then we just take this away if you want to follow me, Henry. So, <clears throat> we take this away, keeping the bees off, because they can, they can follow you a bit. <clears throat> so, over here, I have a stack of spare frames been worn out and so I've got this right away from the hives because the bees try to get it back and they'll start to chase you if you're not careful and so here's one that's had honey in before and been through the centrifuge so it looks a bit of a mess but it's already drawn out so it saves them having to make more wax and we swap that So we just replace with this so that they can get started straight away. So always I try to keep the honeycomb where once the honey's been taken out and give it back to them because that saves them the time of, and the energy of having to make more wax. So um, what we'll do, Henry and I will now just get on with backwards and forwards in that process to take out any ones that look good. But now that's good news. So yeah, I'll leave them that one. So we just want to make sure, and so as you, as you go, you just want to keep keeping vigilant to flick bees off. Oh, that's a nice that's, one. That's this side's almost perfect. perfect, but yeah. 
you've got a brush or do you? No, I just give them a, a shake and then I just go around with my finger and just flick the bones. Mm. Oh, this one's lovely. Just a tiny little bit of area on that. Side. They're easier to shake off ones that are totally capped as well. Oh, that's perfect. This one's wonderful, isn't it? This one's it? absolutely It wouldn't win the sample frame at the honey show because of it's being because it's because of this bulgy but shape. This side yes. is perfect. So, yeah. <laughs> this is lovely. Ah oh, no it wouldn't win because oh. they've not quite capped that bottom edge and they've not gone to the edges there. But yeah what would lose it? Because this one oh, look at all the honey I know because this one's been used a few times now we've got this just wiggly woggly surface on it as well and then this area not capped so it wouldn't win anything but it is a great deal of honey and so I'm happy about that. It came off pretty well, just two little flingers on. Put the tongues away. This one's got a hole on the bottom, that's where they're all ready to run. Come on. It is like that it's a game they like to play. It is. It's you like know. the dog that you chase around the doors. Yes. Or a cat that's forever on the wrong side. Yes. Yes. It's always in the way syndrome is, is a recognised cat disorder. There's one, there's one down there still. Yes, that's that's okay. Oh, that one's nice. the one. The, the 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 level below looks like there's not much doing, which mm. I, I, to be honest, we're better than I expected just in the top here. So I'm happy. Yeah, looking down, there's not much else going on there. Hiding in the hole. Oh, didn't like yeah, that. Sorry, girl. Right. Oh, and one more. Aha. Now, I think that's it from this box, Chris. I think that might be it. The other side's completely uncapped and a bit dribbly. Oh, OK, cool. That's where we'll stop then. Oh, it looks like you've got a friend. Yes, we get a lot of that. I... I really ought to do just a little compilation video of bees, bees on, on the cameras. lens. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. In various moods, from investigative to furious. Okay. Yeah, we'll leave them with that. 
That last one. Bees, they, they do like storing their honey as, as high as they can. They do, yeah. yeah. No, so you can see looking down, none of this is likely to be that worthwhile. What we'll do, we'll do a little shake test on the very central one where the most honey will be. I've talked about it in another video. They like to start in the middle and work out. So your best one will be the centre frame in the normal course of things. So if we just take a look at this, this will tell us everything we need. No, look, it's dripping just as I do that. So, uh, yeah, drips and drops on the. Uh... Yeah, uh, it's not that much, but yeah, this isn't worth taking. So it doesn't matter. I'm pretty happy with what we've got there. So all I'll do now, we'll just put this one down on the next level. I'll just check that the brood is looking all right in here as well, because I've not looked for a couple of weeks. That also leaves them with a few mouthfuls if we do have a bad day, like I talked about with the other ones. A bit smooth. I'm happier with that. <clears throat> you know, and this isn't a, a mega mega hive, this one, compared to some. You know, the number of bees isn't huge, but uh, Bright has been good this year, which is good because last year it was shocking, but they had a fantastic spring. Um, that is bone dry, that one. That tells you a thing or two as well. No, I feel a little bit. All other things being equal, I wouldn't be taking that honey away from them right now for my own work and just for in case we get a bad week of weather coming through. The, the, the mouths to feed here will need that reserve. And you know, I don't have a problem with them eating that because they'll make it back up. Um, I often think it would be better to take the honey off and feed them sugar syrup during the June gap so that that's what's, that's what's uh, being going in the debit column. And actual honey, this one's heavy. Right, I've talked about this in another video. They've been moving that honey up out of there. Now, whether that's because they've been eating it or moving it up, up into the supers, I couldn't tell you. A nice bit of stored pollen there, so that's pretty good. They need the pollen for the protein to feed to the grubs. So you quite often get that. I would anticipate that we're going to have brood on this next one, because you quite often get that wall of pollen on the outer edge of the brood nest. There we go. Yeah, here's nice brood. Nice new laid eggs. Oh, look, lovely new laid eggs. I, I dream, this camera isn't perfect for it, but basically, so the focal length is about an inch you can get to. So if you get closer, 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 colleagues, closer. I dream of this camera being able to show the, the eggs nicely. The you can see the grubs, they're lovely. Um, but I do need to upgrade some camera equipment to be able to mix in. I think this one's quite nice for general stuff, but I need something with a bit of a tighter. The fisheye lens just doesn't do you. <coughs> do you the justice. Right, so anyway, lovely pattern of eggs there just denotes to us that the queen is present and healthy. So all I'm going to do is go through the rest of the brood nest, checking for queen cups. And we put it back together again and that's everything done at ride. On to St Helens. Would you pass me the smoker just so I can get them off the, the lugs? Oh, there we go. I'm just giving a bit of a, a puff there. So. So I, I know that there's eggs, so I don't need to worry about looking for any more there. It's just looking for any, any signs of swarminess, which I wouldn't anticipate from these ones, because they've got a lot of space for the number of bees. And that's two supers. And the reason that that's, that was two supers on um, what I think is going to work out to be about five or six frames of brood, which isn't a huge colony, is because the rest of them, they had an awful lot of honey left over through the winter. Ha, here we go. I can tell you where she's been. That beautiful white pollen is off the bramble. I've not seen that white pollen before this year, 
this year. That's the first of the year and uh, that is bramble pollen. So we know that there my bees are foraging on that. There's another one with the same here as well, dead centre. So that's pleasing. Last year, part of our problem with poor harvest was the bramble only flowered for about a week and was then dropping petals and was done. If we get a decent length of bramble, normally bramble sort of flowers a bit successionally. You get some, we're seeing, I think we're getting signs of that here, Henry, if you, if you just look at this. So, you know, we've got flowers here, some flowers are over, but we've got lots and lots of buds still to come out. And that's the normal course with bramble, that it's, uh, you get a good succession of flowers for, you know, about a month. And that's where an awful lot of our honey comes from. Last year, it came out all at once and finished all at once. And we, we had to rely on other things. And so sites with access to gardens where there was a good diverse diversity of forage did all right. So St. Helens did all right. My Newport one did all right. These ones here, although there, there are gardens close enough, I don't think we've got any sort of super, super gardens, you know, really extravagantly planted ones that near to. So Ride didn't do too well because they really count on the wild first. Carisbrook were a disaster. I got half a super off them um, because Carisbrook is right out in the country and the wild has let us down. New brood there. Mm. I'm getting buzzed now. Yeah. You expect it when you're harvesting honey. They don't like it. They were quite well behaved in the early part of it. But I think they may have realised that they've been diddled here. <coughs> this is quite a nicely behaved hive, really. And there we go. At the far end, another wall of surplus pollen there as well, which is good. Cool. All right. Yeah, I think that was. I think that was six frames of brood there. That's not a lot of frames of brood to have two supers on, but they have an awful lot of honey to move up from the early part of the year where we had a good spring. So not all of the honey that's in there will be specifically honey from now. There will also be honey from April mixed in with that. Right, I'm just going to smoke them off from the crush zone. All right. Okay, there we go to me. For you, go to the one shot, as they do say. Okay, I hope that that was interesting. Now, if you're on the Isle of Wight, I would heartily recommend you come and see us at the county show. Uh, not this weekend coming, the weekend after. I'd remember the date, except I don't remember things like that. Uh, I will put, it, put the link in the doobly-doo below. Um, so I hope that that has been interesting and informative. I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Take care.